Okay, so in this problem we're told, you buy a plastic dart gun, and being a clever physics student, you decide to do a quick calculation to find its maximum horizontal range. You shoot the gun straight up, and it takes 4 seconds for the dart to land back at the barrel. What is the maximum horizontal range of your gun? So first let's understand what we have going on. So we have this gun, and it's going to be firing a uh, dart, right? So it's going to be firing this dart upwards, and then we know it's going to take 4 seconds from when we shoot it to it landing straight back down and reaching the barrel again, that's going to take a total of four seconds. So we know basically that time, we'll just say T equals four seconds. And so based off this information, what we're trying to do is find the maximum range uh, of our gun. So the, basically, if we shot the gun at some angle, right, let's say this was the path of the gun, we're basically trying to find this range right here. So this uh, range, we can just call it delta x. So basically, that's what we're trying to find. And so the way we calculate that is by using this formula here. So basically, the, or the range, when you fire something with some initial velocity, v sub 0, with some launch angle theta uh, on Earth, because we're assuming gravity is g, then r is going to be the range it travels. So basically, we're just going to solve for the velocity, and then plug in the maximum launch, uh, launch angle. And then if we plug in those values, we can get its maximum range. So another thing to keep in mind is whenever you fire something, its maximum horizontal range is going to be when theta is 45 degrees. So if I fire this, you can imagine like this, we want it to be at a 45 degree angle for it to travel its maximum distance. So that's just a, a rule you should know, 45 degrees for its maximum. So we know theta is 45. Now we just need to find the initial velocity of the gun, and that would give us our, our maximum range, right? Because if we know the speed we're firing it at, right, the maximum speed we can fire it at, and then the maximum, or the best angle, the launch angle, that'll give us our maximum range R. So we need to find the initial velocity here. And so the way we do that, or I like to do that, is first by writing out my given. So we have given, uh, and then I like to write out all my kinematic variables. So in this case, we're going to be uh, working along the Y here. So I'll just say this is the y direction. So I write out my five main kinematic variables. In this case, we have delta y. We have v sub 0 y, v sub y. We have a sub y, and we have t. So these are our variables. And so let's keep in mind what we know here. So whenever you do kinematics, you always choose an interval to work along. So the interval that I'm going to choose is basically from the point it's fired to its maximum point. So you can imagine, let's say that right there is its maximum point. Let me zoom out a bit. So essentially, this along here. So another thing you should know, or a, a trick, is if they tell you the time it takes for it to go up to a certain point and down, half the time is how long it takes to go up, and half the time is how long it takes to go down. So we know the time it's going to take for this interval from top to bottom is two seconds because the total time is four uh, and then dividing by that by two is just two seconds so we know t and then what's the acceleration acting on this uh, dart here so we know it's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared the reason is is it's pointing downwards so you should notice that um, and then that's uh, the acceleration due to gravity it's just g you should know that by now uh, and then another thing you should know is when something reaches its maximum point like this, so if it's fired and then it's going to go up, go up, go up, and eventually it's going to hit its max point, at that max point before it starts falling down, its velocity is zero. So notice V sub Y is our velocity at the end of the interval, which is that point. And I said at that point, it's its maximum height. So V sub Y is just zero meters per second. And so notice we have three kinematic variables. And you only need three to solve for something. So delta y we actually don't need. And we want to find the initial velocity in the y. Uh, we just want to find the velocity in a straight up. And so that's what we're going to be solving for here. So I'll just say equals question mark. And so uh, now to find the initial velocity that we're going to plug into this formula, uh, we're just going to use uh, one of the kinematic equations. So you can either Google it or hopefully you haven't memorized. But the equation we're going to use is this one right here. So uh, v equals v sub 0 plus a times t, where v is the final velocity, v sub 0 is the initial, and then you have acceleration times time. So we obviously want the initial, so we have basically v minus 
a times t equals v sub zero. So it's just a matter of plugging it in now. Uh, you have zero minus 9.8, or minus, sorry, minus minus 9.8 times two. Uh, and then you want to multiply that out. And when you do that, you should get that it equals 19.6, I believe. Yeah, so 19.6. And so notice that this value is positive, which just means it's going upwards. Uh, the negative just indicated the downwards direction of uh, the gravity. So we have our initial velocity here, 19.6 meters per second. So that's your V sub zero. And then now that we have that, all we have to do is just plug it back into our equation here. So, um, yeah, so it's just a matter of plugging it back in here now. So let's go ahead and do that. So we found the initial velocity. So the initial velocity that we're firing here and at its maximum point is the same. You just basically assume that. So we have 19.6 squared times the sine of 2 times theta. So notice that theta I said was 45 degrees. 45 degrees is when it's at its maximum. Right when you fire something, if it's at 45 degrees, it'll go the farthest. And you can see it in the math here. If I plug in 45 here, 2 times 45 you should know is 90. And then the sine of 90 is 1. And that's the maximum value of sine. If you plug in anything into sine, the max value you can get is 1. Right? So if we want the max r, we need the max sine, which comes from theta equals 45. Because we want a 1 there, which is its max. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then you would just divide by 9.8 or g. And so you should see it's really just 19.6 squared. Uh, and then you're dividing by 9.8 there. So you would get uh, the range is equal to 39.2. Uh, since we're using the standard units, we just have meters here. Uh, since we use meters per second for the velocity. But essentially, the max range or horizontal range uh, is 39.2 meters. So this is going to be your answer. And then just a quick recap of the things you should know. Uh, memorize this formula here. It's really important if you're ever dealing with range. Uh, another thing is uh, maximum launch angle is at 45 degrees. And then, yeah, this is just the beginning part to find the initial velocity is just basic kinematics. I always recommend writing it out like this. It just makes it a lot easier to solve. And then there were a couple of tricks. Uh, notice at the max point, velocity zero. And then you could half the time just to get upwards like we did there. Uh, but yeah, so... Those were the tricks, and uh, yeah, this is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, just one more thing, guys. If you're having trouble with the basics setting up these kinematic problems, I'll have a video linked in the description if you guys want to look at that uh, in order to just get the basic guide on how to solve these. Uh, but in order to solve any kinematic problems, you're going to need to know how to set them up like this, so I just recommend going to watch that video if you struggled uh, with this part specifically. Uh, but yeah, so uh, hopefully you found this video useful.